exponentials and logarithms. This here is an exponential function because the x part of it is in the powers or the exponents. This here is a logarithm and that is actually telling us the same relationship between x and y as that exponential one is. So these two actually say the same things just in a slightly different way. So let's see how that works. We know that 32 is equal to 2 to the power of 5, so we can rewrite it as a log to base 2. So that means that if we were thinking in terms of how many 2s make 32 um, in powers wise, that would be 5. So 2 to the power of 5 makes 32. This little 2 here, that's called the base, so it's what we're counting in. So we're thinking in powers of 2. We can do other bases as well. So 10 squared equals 100 would then be talking about log to base 10 of 100. So what do we have to raise 10 to the power of to make 100? And that would be 2. Now, interestingly, with this one, we actually don't need to write the 10. If it's log to base 10, we can just write log. Um, it's just considered convention. So if you see a question that's just a log with no base, you can assume it's in log to base 10, which is what your calculator does as well. You'll see there's a log button there. That's always going to be log base 10. All right, next one. 81 is the same as 3 to the power of 4. So if we take um, that in log form, that would be log 3 of 81 equals 4, because we have to raise 3 to the power of 4 to make 81. We can do this with fractions as well, so long as we can write them as a power of something. Then we take that quarter, will be 2 to the power of minus 2. So we can rewrite that as log base 2 of a quarter is equal to minus 2. We have some laws of logs that are very useful as well. So we have this multiplicative one here, where log of x times y equals log x plus log y. And similarly, following on from that, you can see where this is going. If we do a division, we get log x minus log y. And then leading on from the multiplication one, if we think about this, log x to the power of n, think about if you were timesing that, say x to the power of 3, then you would do log x plus log x plus log x. You get three lots of log x. So we can extend that to, if we did x to the power of n, we would get n lots of log x. So we have n log x. Right, let's look at how this works in practice. So we've got log 3 plus log 4 is equal to, well, 3 times 4 is 12. Log 12 minus log 6, 12 divided by 6 is 2. And 2 log 3, well, we're going to take that 3 and raise it to the power of 2, so that will be log 9. Now, this is particularly useful when we're trying to solve equations like this. You may have come across this a little bit before, but what we would do in this case is take log of both sides. Then we can use that index rule, the purpley pink one above, to bring that x down. Then we can divide through by the log 2.05 and then we get our final answer of x being less than 4.95. The only thing with that is you have to be careful when you do your dividing part that you're not dividing through by a negative number because if you were, you'd have to reverse the inequality. That's just one little thing to watch out for.